everything's turning red! Oh my god, everything's turning red! Oh Jesus, what the hell is happening behind me? Get me out of here! Black. Geeks, what is going on? You Epic Clans here, back in your life, and we're doing something a little new today. I'm coming at you from a sort of new standing work slash PlayStation. Uh, not a PlayStation, but a, a workstation for playing video games. So without further ado, let's check this thing out. Today we are playing The Stanley Parable. This is a game I have been dying to play for ages and ages. It's a couple years old at this point but very, very unique. I haven't come across anything that quite does what this game does. It's an existential, almost, experience. So I picked up this game in a Steam sale. Uh, Steam describes it in a very unique way. The Stanley Parable is a first-person exploration game. You will play as Stanley, and you will not play as Stanley. You will follow a story, and you will not follow a story. You will have a choice, and you will have no choice at all. The game will end, but the game will never end. That is the description here. Got great reviews. Let's do this thing. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly this job, and Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say, Hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. This is it. You can see the graphics are a little bit old, a little bit dated, but nothing crazy. It still looks really good. It has a lot of charm to it. Can I do things? Yes, I can type. No, I can't. So one thing I didn't mention, this game makes a better character out of its narrator than any other game except maybe the Portal game. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where's the meeting room? No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. This narrator will, uh, will change what he says based on what you do. This computer's on. Let me add it. No, I just turned it off. These look like old IBMs. So if I don't go to the meeting room, it's going to change what this narrator says. So I have some existential choice here. That's locked. I'm guessing they're all locked. Turn it off. Hey. Did I get in there? I can't get in there. Jeez, that's a bright window. I want over there. There, this is how we do it. No, okay, I gotta go around in the hallway. Oh, look at these weird spots. I can't get through anywhere. Okay. Yes, then do we want to go to the meeting room? Is this narrator leading us into some kind of... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Talk about an existential experience. The game will change based on which door I go through. 
Mm. Yeah, let's go let Let's listen to this guy. Oh, you bastard. Closing doors on me? This is a trap, you son of a bitch. Come on, who's in here? Anybody? Oh, that's a creepy office. Where's the meeting room? These doors are all dang locked. Oh, this looks like a meeting room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. See, now, I'm not sure I want to listen to this clown. Meeting schedule, this is funny. How not to get fired using slides to assure employees that everything is okay? Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic header. And throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and productive work environment. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Yeah, this is funny. I like this game. It's, it's got some ridiculous charm. So it says to go to the boss's office. Stop closing doors behind me, you freaky ass. Oh, that door opened. There's a broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Or did I? Maybe I didn't. There you go. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No choice no is a choice. Here. Oh, really? Stupid old fool. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. All right, fine. He wasn't even Get me doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, oh, he shut up. justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Sweet F.A. See, listen to the charm of this guy. He's tremendous. All right. So our only real option is to hide in a broom closet, which doesn't seem particularly effective at moving the story forward. Coming to a staircase, oh. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm tired of listening to this guy, guys. Give me this door. Give me further down. Let's rebel against this freak. Is that a parked car? Let's get out of here. Let's leave and but never Stanley come back. Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Yes, that's maybe, right. He thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All maybe. of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting, were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined <laughs> himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh! Then he imagined himself soaring through space yes. on a magical star field. Oh, wait. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley oh. marveled that he had still not woken oh, look. up. How was he remaining so lucid? Wait, and it then ends. perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's Wait, head. Wait, I have looped around. He was around. amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. I have looped Why around. is there a voice in my head? Where's that spilled cup of coffee? Everything that I'm doing and thinking. Yeah, now shut up. Voice was describing is there a spilled cup of coffee? By Stanley, yes, there is. Who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice I'm describing trapped. me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams... We're trapped! The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. 
How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Shut up! Stanley Get me out of here! Stanley has awake right now. This has become a nightmare. been in his life. Shut it! Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. Yes, we're out! After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this no. was in fact a dream. Did the voice Shh. not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He Damn. would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. When I open Let my eyes, wake up, he thought to himself, I will be in a bed. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Oh, the screen's black. Let me go back to my job. Yes. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Let's do it. Please. It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. <laughs> my life is normal. <laughs> I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. What a freaky first show. Oh, I'm still standing beside this dang car. Uh, guys. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I oh, everything's turning real. red. Oh, my God, everything's turning red. Oh, Jesus, what the hell's happening behind me? Get me out of here. Black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously <laughs> crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, <laughs> and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then what? she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The they were not her. important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. This and isn't by the Mary The rest of her life. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> oh, Lord. Guys, that is... As good a time as any to end the first episode, I think that might be one of the endings. So next time I'll play, I'll have to do something different. Uh, I'm going to try and keep the episodes shorter. This one might be around 10 to 15. I'm going to try and keep them around 10. Geeks, thank you for watching the very first episode of me, Unite the Clans, playing The Stanley Parable, a hilarious and very strange game. I hope you liked the first episode. Whether you did or not, I'm going to be bringing you more of it because I'm dying to explore this game and it's ridiculously hilarious and neat. That's it for now, and I will see all you geeks in the next episode of the Stanley Parable.